tearing it up through the bracket. That's who we were following for most of the time. But we also have Neptune Gaming, who had to stave off quite the attack from Diablo Snores in the last game that we watched. Ah, uh, yes, and Neptune Gaming did quite a good job in being able to stave off that massive, crazy backdoor strategy, but now can they deal with the crazy strong mechanics of SK Gaming? We've got the draft link already, so let's take a quick look into seeing what's going on in the map picks and bans. Remember, this is best of three, so this is going to be game number one. They're deciding between Black Arts Bay, Cursed Hollow, and Garden of Terror right now. Well, it's down to Cursed Hollow and Garden of Terror, and I feel like it would be Cursed Hollow, but I guess we could maybe have our first game of the day on Garden of Terror. I know a lot of people don't necessarily love playing on that map. It's so huge, and the potential of dealing a ton of damage with the Garden Terror makes it kind of an issue for a lot of teams. Yeah, it is such a longer map, too, just because of how the mechanic mm -hmm. works and everything. So it looks like our first map going to be Cursed Hollow Awesome. A very, very strong map to start up between both these teams because it's arguably one of the most balanced maps, even though it does have a little bit of RNG when it comes to tribute spawnings. But we've got Cursed Hollow to be our first map. So SK Gaming, first pick, first ban. You know, if I had to throw my money down <laughs> on what they pick first... <laughs> Yeah, I, I would be right there with you. I would not take that bet. I'm wondering if they'll also choose to ban Sylvanas. They've done that a couple of times as well on this map. Yeah, Sylvanas I think is going to be a really good ban on this map because just, you know, I said this before, I believe last time we saw Chris Hollow, there it's the Sylvanas ban. You put her in a lane, she's so far removed from everybody else, and she just immediately starts pushing down lanes really, really quickly. She's a mobile curse herself. And when you concatenate that with the actual curse itself, it's just scary, scary good. Yes, I agree with that. Now I'm wondering what Neptune will choose to ban here. They have the possibility of the Vikings, which I don't think would be bad here as well. And there they are. So we're going to be stopping those uber siege, uber experience gainers from being able to play in this game. That's a shame because we still haven't seen a single longboat raid <laughs> yet. And wow. <laughs> wow, I'm really surprised right now, Gillyweed. We're seeing we're seeing an Uber Eck come in as the first pick for SK Gaming. This is like mind blowing. I don't think we've ever seen this before. I don't know if we ever have at all in the history of this tournament. But they're going to grab a Nubarak, and I don't know if, I think Neptune was the one who picked him up in the last game that we saw first pick as well. So they're going to choose to grab Kael'thas Interior. Yeah, a good pairing of heroes here. Jaina is now available here for SK Gaming. That allows the knock, picking up the Tyrael allows SK Gaming, or uh, denies SK Gaming the ability to get that double blood for blood on the level 16 with the Nubarak and Tyrael, but at the same time allows Neptune Gaming to pick up one of the strong, really strong casters, which is going to be that Kael'thas, but also allows SK Gaming to pick up Jaina. It's a little bit of a difficult decision, but I think it was a very, very good one. Mm -hmm. They do have the Jaina, and now they're also going to grab Brightwing. We've seen how much they really like playing with this fairy dragon. So they're going to go ahead and maybe sacrifice the possibility of having another uh, another damage dealer here in the early game for going ahead and grabbing the support that they know that they want. Yeah, Brightwing is just such a strong mobile component on this map, especially because as soon as any curse pops up, she can just stay in a lane, soak up a little bit more damage, throw down maybe even a double promote, and then immediately teleport into that fight and actually do a good amount of work as well. So she's just so incredibly strong in how much she does, and she's got that little bit of a sustain bug where she gets double healed from her own passive trait. So it's going to be really strong for her in order to actually just be such a mobile terror on this map. Mobile terror, I like that. She definitely is that. Now, Neptune is starting to go for more of their damage dealers. They've grabbed Vala. She is obviously, I think we call them, we call her the wingman because she fits any composition so super well. She just is, d does great amount of damage, but also has the escape with the vault. So not something you have to worry about quite as much as some of those casters like Kael'thas who don't really have much of an escape there. And now I'm wondering if Neptune will go ahead and pick up their support here or uh, maybe another tank. Yeah, they could pick up something like an Uther. I think it would actually be a pretty good pickup for their support. And that might let them pick up instead another ranged warrior, or sorry, another ranged assassin instead of going mm -hmm. for a second warrior. However, they could go for something like a Malfurion and go for that double warrior meta. It's really up to Neptune right now. Last game, I believe we saw them pick up a double warrior. So I feel like that's going to be 
probably following along the same lines. Probably going to be a, like a Muradin and a Malfurion. Go for the double M's. M&M's. Everybody loves M&M's, right? Mm-hmm. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, so well, that's going to be the question here is do they pick those up or do they go for something a little bit different? Yeah, they're definitely dipping in the time pool a bit in answering that question themselves question themselves. They've got lots of different options of what they want to do. It looks like it will be Zeratul. So they are going to grab Zeratul, which means they are down to just a support there for the last pick. Meanwhile, SK now has two picks to try to say, all right, we see Kael'thas, Vala, Zeratul, and Ethereal on top of that. What can we do to deal with that? That is going to be an interesting question, right? Because they need to pick up a second, a second warrior. It's going to probably be Maybe they go for M&Ms. Maybe they like the M&M build. They go for Malfurion and Muradin at the same time. But at the same time, they now have to worry about this Zeratul. So they might want to try and think of ways that they could eliminate the inevitable Uther pick that's going to come in here. Because Zeratul is probably going to get Uther with him. It's going to be a Divine Shield, possibly Shadow Assault to go with that. Mm -hmm. And they could eliminate somebody really quickly. And then Kael'thas has to worry about everybody else. Yep. That can definitely be the case. We've already seen that once before in this. So SK are going to go for the double tank. They have Muradin, and we've seen them run Muradin and Nubrak to great success before. And on top of that, having Brightwing, she's going to be able to teleport around where she needs to. SK should be looking right now at who they want as their final damage dealer. Yeah, that's going to be a pretty good question. I guess they could go for a number of different solutions here. What if they went for something like a hammer. Is Steel Dawn still in chat? If Steel Dawn is still in chat, then it's going to be a hammer. <laughs> Steel Dawn does love Sergeant Hammer, and SK does too. They have last picked her before, and it ended up causing a lot of issues for the team they played against with that, because I think they were just not anticipating a Sergeant Hammer at all. But they also have possibilities of a Falstad. We've seen lots of Falstad in this tournament as well. What will it be? Both of those have a lot of range options in terms of Siege, and in both, uh, especially Falstad, we've talked about him being great on Cursed Hollow because of the, the fights, the areas that you fight around, but remember, Sergeant Hammer, if she can get a good Siege position around those tributes, it makes it really difficult for a team to try to engage into that. Could be a Tychus. We saw Tychus before as well. Could. It could. But that was against there. an Illidan. Hmm. Tagara is another good pickup. Mm -hmm. There's actually so many ranged warrior. Uh, saint, well, I keep saying that ranged assassins that really fit into this role right now. Falstad. Okay, so Falstad. Oh, it's just gonna be good. You know, mobile that allows them to kind of stay in a whole bunch of different lanes. Then everybody just immediately travels to wherever the heck the tribute is gonna be if they feel like they really need to make an issue of that. Well, Neptune Gaming now has to pick up their support. Now, Furion could easily be their support or an Uther. They could go for either way. And that's going to be a really interesting question because I feel like with the Uther, they're going to have pretty good spot healing and it gives them a little bit more CC. But I feel like the Malfurion heals right now are probably what they're going to want because just to deal with all that ridiculous sustained damage coming out from that Murd and the Anubarak. Jane is a little bit more bursty, Falstad a little bit more bursty, but I feel like the Tranquility could definitely be the best pickup here. Oh yeah, Tranquility is amazing. And... Beyond that, they still do have the potential for roots as well. The only issue there is that Malph, like Kael'thas, doesn't have a ton of escape. Really, you have to hope that you land your roots and then try to coerce them to go through them so that they have to stop while you can get away. But that's not, I mean, that is a little bit of an issue. You've got the Muradin and a Nubrak. Actually, with a Nubrak, it's a huge issue because they can <laughs> both get in there. So never mind, just forget I said that. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Sorry, I'm yawning a little bit. It's been a long day of casting so far. Now we're caffeine. finally at the finals. I gotta slap my face up. I gotta get going. I gotta get ready because <laughs> Neptune Gaming still has to pick their support. That's gonna be game number one. Who is gonna take this game composition wise? It's gonna be my question so far. SK got a pretty good composition. Yeah, they've got Team Dwarf with Muradin and Falstad. Always, I, I feel like with that sort of synergy, you automatically get a little bit of a power boost. Hmm. They've got a little bit of a. It's 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 all Warcraft people, but they've got a little bit of a of an issue here. They've got like. The leader of the undead, well, one of the undead armies, and then three <laughs> alliance characters all put together. Oof. Whereas looking at Neptune Gaming, they've got like they've got a hodgepodge. They've got two Diablo characters. They've got a Starcraft character and a Warcraft character. They're the they're the real heroes here, right? They're the ones yeah. working together. 
from all different <laughs> universes. All right, Uther is going to be the last pickup here for Neptune Gaming. And that's going to be interesting. I'm curious to see if we're going to see that, that Divine Shield Shadow Assault Zeratul again. I would love to see that again. I think we'll be able to tell with some of... Some of the early talents, probably, although last game the Zeratul picked some of the early, like, season marksmen, but then went ahead and got Void Prison anyway. But that was because that was a crazy composition. <laughs> I'm really hoping that we'll get to see the Shadow Assaults and the Divine Shield, because that was really fun to watch. That was a really interesting way to kind of just play that character, and really just allowed him to do some really weird things that we haven't really seen too many times before. I believe I've only seen it in one tournament before it was titan arena i saw divine shield shadow assault and i remember itra was my co-caster and neither of us even noticed it we were just like huh weird there's no void person going down in these fights this zeratul is oh my god he's got shadow assault <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love when something like that happens unless it happens to you while you're playing right and you're like why haven't i been judgmented or like why did we just get wrecked in that fight oh because you're a sanctification great i like those picks that throw you off because there's it's so unexpected because you would never see it. Now, Sanctification we see a bit more now, and maybe we will the Shadow Assaults too, but I love those things that can really throw people off. All right, well, apparently we've got a little bit of lag here. Apparently, ooh, I'm fabulous, needs a couple of minutes here. So we've got a little bit of time to just kind of sit around and talk about this composition, even though we've been talking about it quite a bit. Or we can talk about the map, Cursed Hollow, one of the funnier maps to watch just because... It really kind of ends up being so many different ways that you can really win on this map. We've seen a lot of teams even just completely forego getting up the tributes. Um, and apparently there's a huge fight going on right now. It's around the pronunciation of one of the members of Neptune Gaming's names. Oh. People in chat are telling me it's CJ. He's saying it's Siege like a siege tank. Snaps. It looks like... So should I go with what the player says, or should I go with what chat says? Would chat do me wrong? Would chat lie to me? I don't think they would do something like that to you. I don't think so either. No. Get my name right, boys. <laughs> well, Siege slash slash CJ. Maybe we'll just have to say it both ways every time Siege we try CJ? to know. Siege CJ. How about Siege J? Siege J. There we go. See, that's a nice compromise. Yeah. I mean, everyone wins. I feel like somebody who tells me that their name is this pronounced this way, I should listen to them. But I don't know why the chat would lie to me. Chat never lies. Never ever. Mm -mm. Chat's chat's normally really cool about this kind of stuff. So I'm kind of confused. I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit. I I don't know what to do here. Well, maybe CJ got amnesia from almost losing core in the last game. That's true. Just speculating. That's true. And then forgot how to say his own name. His own name. And yeah. now he's like he thought that he remembered how to say his own name. Maybe mm -hmm. it was like he found like a note from his teenage years and was like, "Remember, it's Siege cuz Siege sounds cooler." And like did a little hair flip cuz that's what teenagers are like. And then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then and then everybody's trying to remind him it's not Siege, it's CJ, it's CJ, and he's just not taking it. He's not remembering it. No, uh, he's not. We will remind him by by making sure to pronounce it wrong every single time we say it this game. Yes. We're going to go back and <laughs> forth. Every other time we mention it, we'll say Siege or CJ. Got it. I think I can do that. I think we can do that. <laughs> Forget about actually, you know, casting the game, making sure we make make a good uh, calls and what to obs. We're just going to make sure that we constantly say the name every other time incorrectly. <laughs> incorrectly or correctly. We don't even know anymore. We have no idea. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we do have Ooh, I'm Fabulous back into this, uh, into this match, into this little lobby here. So we're just waiting for our friends here to all ready up and go. Maybe his name should be, ooh, I'm late. Oh, snap. Oh, snap, but <laughs> fashionably late. Maybe it's fabulously late to him. Fashionably. It could be, ooh, I'm fabulously late. Ooh. Mm. I'm fabulously late. <laughs> <laughs> All ready right. Ready up, boys. Yeah, I'm ready for everybody to go. My friends are trolling you. I don't believe you. The majority <laughs> is telling me it's CJ. 
<laughs> All right. Somebody's so lying here, and I'm not too happy about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't like being lied to. All right, let's go. As Zarmody says at the last moment, Liverpool, which is probably going to... Uh, me just saying Liverpool is probably going to like spur up an entire soccer argument. And I said soccer. I didn't even say football. So now Ooh, the Europe, snaps. Now all of Europe hates me. Football. <laughs> so not only... You, we've gone away from the Liverpool argument, and immediately it's just going to be whether or not it's football. All right, anyway. So let's get on to this game. Game loading up. We can argue about whoever is going to win that next soccer match. I'm going to keep saying soccer just to uh, make everybody upset. Soccer and CJ just completely just go completely off. Anyway, let's talk about these finals. We got these games going. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look on into the main screen over here on the left-hand side. It is, ooh, actually, for some strange reason, the lobby messed up and actually put them in the top. So it's going to be Neptune Gaming on the blue-hand side. And that's going to be Siege as the Tyrael in the mid lane. We've got Blade as the Vala in the bottom lane. We've got Uum Fabulous, Fi, Uum Fabulous on the Zeratul, Fi on the Kel uh, Kel'thas, and Uther on Bad News Airy. And for SK Gaming in Red Bakery, we'll be playing Jaina. Keepers is on Muradin. Rave TGN once again playing Brightwing. Zarmony on his favorite in Uberak and playing Falstad will be Snitch. Now, Zarmany, I think we've seen him play so many Anubarax in the last couple of games that I feel like at this point he's going to be like the new official strategy guide person for Anubarak. And I'm curious to see if he's going to put up a new build or something like that on any of the websites. Ooh, I'm fabulous walking right on into that bush. Keepers went for the stun, but it didn't actually land. Oh, but they're throwing a bunch of damage on Kael'thas, who tried to get a good gravity, gravity lapse on Bakery, but wasn't able to do so. Now Keepers is jumping in, does not get the stun once again on Fi. Bakery coming in as well, but Ruther's going to come in and be able to make sure that Fi gets away safely. Okay, so we've got both these teams just kind of dividing up. We actually still have Bakery and Kiefer's looking like they're trying to decide which lane they want to go down. Who and Fabulous does get the scout out of them moving down to this bot lane. Yeah, it looks like they're running a little bit of a gank squad, trying to catch somebody out here, get ahead in the experience just a little bit. But uh, meanwhile, Kael'thas does pick up that Felon Fusion, going to be a little bit more sustainable. And Vala once again going for Hungering Arrow, arrow Build. Yeah, very, very interesting decision here to go for that Hungering Arrow Build. But maybe that gives her that little bit of lane dominance that allows her to kind of start turning this game into her favor in the lane. But, wow, wow, we're talking about that. Ooh, Fabulous taking a lot of damage, but so is Kiefer's Living Bomb. Going to get that last little bit of damage in. Both these teams trading blows back and forth. Vala doing a good amount of damage to Zarmany. That's exactly what we were talking about before. That Hungering Arrow does give very, very strong lane presence. Yeah, it really helps with sustainability, but now it's Fi getting very, very low, is going to be pulling more for a long time, and comes back up just in time to die. Oh, that's a shame. That's going to be First Blood going on over to SK Gaming. And that's going to be a nice little, little bit of experience here. It's not really too much of a lead just yet, because no lane has, been, uh, has gone really in either way. Snitch taking a little bit of damage in the bot lane, but level 4 going to be grabbed here by SK just a little bit earlier. Yeah, we're going to have Gathering Power on Falstad, so we'll really be looking to protect those stacks as he starts to get them. He was getting a little bit low earlier, but a great teleport in from Brightwing made sure that he was able to stay alive. And a protective shield from Brightwing, so really making sure to, they have the sustainability needed in these next team fights. Yeah, and that's going to be a really, really important point. It's just keeping that sustainability. They need to make sure that they're going to keep everybody alive for as long as possible, especially when you're going against that... Uh, the composition that they're going against. You know, you need to make sure that during these tribute fights, you're not going to be losing anybody in ter uh, in teams in terms of the battles because these tribute fights can take a bit of time and they don't really have all the sustainability just by their composition alone. Oh yeah, this tribute fight, especially uh, the first one, because of the quick respawn timers. Often it's a long fight, you never know which way it's really going to go. Now Keepers is jumping in and they're throwing a ton of damage on Kael'thas between Jaina and Falstout. He will go down. A great pickup there as they're going to push the rest of the team back. But will it be long enough for them to pick up this tribute? It looks like it might. Yeah, it's going to be a good, really good lane presence down in this bot lane. SK Gaming taking very, very confident early game so far, and it doesn't look like they want to really let that up anytime soon. They've got so much damage coming in on this bot lane, but they're losing in the mid and the top lane. The, we can see that Zarmany is getting pushed back pretty hard. There's not any tower damage though yet, and that's going to be pretty big, considering that SK is able to take down all this damage in the bot lane. 
Well, now both turrets are down, but can Keepers and Rave get out? That's the real question. It looks like, yes, they will be able to. Falstad is up top, as is Bakery, and Brightwing's coming in as well. They're trying to get a kill on Siege, but won't be able to do so. Maybe rotating in, though, so that they can start taking out turrets in this middle. Yeah, that's going to be, looks like, their next move. It's, they've already taken out the bot lane turrets. Now they can go straight for these... Uh, these turrets in the mid lane if they can actually get them but bakery taking a lot of damage is he going to be able to go down the next tribute is coming up living bomb does not quite finish him off because of the healing coming in here from the bright wing and that's going to allow them to stay alive for long enough and the tribute coming up after they picked up a kill on zeratul both teams do have their level seven talents vala and anub still saying up top neither willing to let the other get the upper hand in soaking which means that right now it's a 4v4 fight here for this tribute the the positioning of it definitely looked to be favoring neptune as the rock outcropping was something that that sk had to get around but for now keepers is already in there and they're doing a great job of zoning through that chokehold yeah and that's going to allow them to just kind of really ward off anybody from coming in and disrupting them. They already had that Uther come in and kind of throw down that Radiance, but it wasn't enough to really turn this fight in their favor. And already they're still still taking a little bit of that experience disadvantage. 8-8 eight to eight right now, but they're still a half, maybe three quarters of a level down. If they can keep, if SK can keep this going until level 10, then that third tribute is going to be very, very easy for them to pick up. But Rave looks like he's getting engaged upon pretty harshly. There's the Polymorph, but is it going to be enough for him to actually get out of here? The body blocking is not enough. Tyrael and Uther are very thin warriors in order to actually try and, like, do real good body blocking. They're not as fat as somebody like a Diablo. Yeah, and thankfully Brightwing had Soothing Mist up, so she was able to hit that, keep herself alive just long enough to get out of there. And now, Bruiser's being picked up by SK Gaming. It looks like Neptune might want to do the same here at their own, but Tribute should be spawning very, very soon. Yeah, and that Tribute's going to be a big fight. As I was saying before, level 10 on the cusp here for SK Gaming. If they can hit that level 10 and really, really solidify their opponents into some area where they just can't, you know, kind of poke at that Tribute, that's going to be an easy tribute and an easier curse. Well, right now, SK is coming around. They don't get the kill on Bad News Area, but that turret is so low, it will go down, and that's going to get them so close to 10. There it is. They've got it. They're picking up Hinterland Blast, Water Elemental, Blink Kill, Avatar, and still not decided yet for Anubarak, but they are going for this tribute, and it will be uncontested. The first curse going to SK Gaming. Oh, Keeper's going straight on in. The forts don't fire when the curse is up, so that means that he can go on without having to worry about the fort slowing him down and doing a lot of damage and it looks like the rest of the team has to just back up they can't really do that much sk gaming coming out in force level 10 has been grabbed here by the blue team neptune is able to hold off for now but are they going to be able to hold off all of sk gaming they're going to lose at least one fort and already in the bot and top lane those creeps are starting to hit on the fort there is a great Void Prison from Ooh, I'm Fabulous, followed by Judgment, but still nobody's down yet. And now the Void Prison's over. Hinterland Blast is going to deal so much damage to Ooh, I'm Fabulous, who does get healed up by Uther, who also drops a Divine Shield on Kael'thas, getting him out of the fight for now so he can get back into a good position. But Blade Solo will be stunned right at the gate and will go down. First kill in this big team fight for SK, and they're pushing the advantage straight onto these towers. It's 4-0 in the kills right now. There's the Phoenix to try and ward them off, but Keepers go straight on in there. Can they actually finish off five? They are gonna be able to, and that's gonna be a really nice victory for them. Meanwhile, on the bot lane and the top lane, it looks like the forts are possibly gonna go down. The bot lane fort has gone down here for Neptune we Gaming, and now SK can move on up and possibly just go for this fort at top, but it looks like, no, they are out of mana, they're out of health, they just want to go back and do some other little camps, maybe. Ooh, possibly even go for the boss. Yeah, they're really close to those level 13 talents, and they know that their opponents have to sit back and maybe lick their wounds, at least defend that top, because they don't want to lose all of their forts. They have at least defended one. Now they're going for this boss, and Vala might be in a position to be able to check it out, maybe throw a multi shot in, but still not doing so, just taking out the minions. And at this point, it means that SK is going to get this boss, but down on bot, uh, Neptune has started their boss of their own. So they've started their boss, and that's going to have to go through quite a bit of the fort here, though. That's going to be the issue. Keeper's going straight on in here. Blade taking too much damage of the might of SK yet again. Coming on in here, level 13 talents being grabbed up as well. Spell shield. We're seeing on both Anubarak as well as Murden, giving them so much more tankiness. The Giant Killer on Falstad, the improved Ice Block on Jaina, and of course Ice Block on Brightwing. 
Yeah, so they really are going to be able to try to mitigate damage between the ice blocks and the spell shields. But then, of course, Falstad, always you love getting that giant killer versus something with a double tank, which they kind of have with the Uther, who is a very tanky support. And uh, here comes the Golem. They've taken down the turrets and the wall already. And it looks like this is something that Neptune does not want to engage into, but may be forced into it. They don't have their level 13 talents yet. Yeah, this is going to be a really difficult fight for them. Oh, but here comes the Void Prison. Can they lock this all up? They're going in on the Murder, and I'm not sure if that's the best decision because the Blink Kill going to barely keep him up. He's able to jump back out of here, and it looks like Siege is going to go down from the slam from the boss, SK Gaming, picking a very confident game number one here so far. They've already taken out the top keep, and they've got the boss now going in on the cord. They don't have enough ability to take on the core just yet because they're starting to run out of mana, starting to run out of health. But they do have the ability to at least get that keep. That pushing top lane is going to be so nice for them. Yeah, and remember that the golem on their side is the one that will push down that lane. So if any point they're able to grab that and push with it, this, it'll go toward the core next time. And that's got to be a scary thing. Something else that's scary, they're already level 15, close to those level 16 talents, whereas their opponents have just picked up level 13. Yeah, and this is going to be really, really long and arduous for them to get from 13 to 16 without losing this game. It looks like Keltos is going to go for that chain bomb, though. So if he can get a good amount of damage in, if he can get those gathering power stacks and get an amazing chain bomb, we could potentially see this game turn on its head. It's Keltos. We saw SK sit in a much worse position when they went against Cast Aside before, and it could potentially turn around on its head like this today. Yeah, they'll really be looking to get those level 16s, not only so that they are at the same talent tier, but, that, but because it also just jacks up that amount of damage that he can deal even more. Vala still going Frost Shot as well, so they do have a little bit of slow there, a little bit of CC that they'll have now, as uh, looks like SK are here to try to just defend and possibly even make an engagement happen. Neptune's going to be really careful here as Kiefer is, is looking for blood. Yeah, I'm curious to see if they're going to be able to engage upon this. I mean, it's so scary. Why would they be out in this location, especially when 16 is so close with the tribute coming up? And SK's like, fine, you know what? You can get this little bit of experience. We'll let you have this, but we've got 16 now. They do indeed. We've got Numbing Blast, so there is going to be the potential for Roots from Jaina, and then a one Blood for Blood from Anubarak, as well as Sticky Powder. So they're really prioritizing the... Uh, the CC that they can do, just making sure that people are slowed so that they can't get away from them once they've got them and they can take them out very quickly. Yeah, and that's going to be exactly what they want to do. They just want to be able to slow somebody down enough so that they can lag them into having that little blizzard that's going to just take them from full health to pretty much nothing. And that's the power of Jaina. You get that little blizzard on somebody and all of a sudden you start running into a lot of damage really quickly as soon as her trait really kicks in. There's the chain bomb. Looks like it's not going to actually be able to start chaining up here. Yeah, that's something that SK will have to be cognizant of, is looking at who gets that and trying to make sure that they get away from everyone else. They don't spread that to every single member. Kiefer's looking like he still really wants to go in, but there's a Void Prison from Moon Fabulous and a Judgment from Siege. And now, so quickly, Brightwing gets taken out. And already, Zeratul is down, though, too. Hinterland Blast drops, but it was dropped on the person who was Divine Shielded. So for now, they're still safe, but Siege gets rooted and taken out instantly. The chain bomb's doing a good amount of work, but is it going to be enough? Here's the question. Five trying to go back in here, but he's got to be really careful because the rest of the team can immediately turn on him. That's exactly what SK Gaming is going to be able to do. Zarmony so low is popping his shield as much as possible. They're trying to whittle away this keep, and oh man, Snitch's little boomerang could have done it. But it looks like instead they're going to be able to pick up Bad News Airy. And now they're sitting in a pretty good, confident position. They picked up another curse. They did, and there's only one keep left away anyway. There's already Winions pushing in toward the core, so SK looking super strong here. They might, they're going to go back and heal up. They knew they got pretty low after that engagement. Their opponents are almost 16, and with taking out minions in defense, should be able to grab that no problem. But in the meantime, SK are going for their boss. And this is just the perfect time to do this. They don't really want to press into their enemy team, especially when they're about to pick up 16 as well. So you want to be a little bit careful, even though they are a level or two down. You still want to make sure you're not going to be going on into and being too aggressive at this point, because it can easily swing back in the other way. This is Cursed Hollow, remember that. But 
at the same time, they can pick up something like a boss and just have that free, free lane pressure in the top lane. And remember when so long ago they picked up that top keep way, way early on? This meant that this lane has been pushed this entire time almost all the way to core. Just a bit ago it was. And now they've got a boss barreling down through there. They're picking up these siege giants as well. This is going to be a huge push that's, that uh, Neptune have really got to contend with. Yeah, and this is going to be one of those really difficult spots. They've got Siege Giants with a Grave Golem going down on the core. Can Neptune Gaming hold this off is the question. They're judgmenting on, in on Keepers, and I don't know if I completely agree with this. Keepers taking a lot of damage, but actually going to get healed right back up. Zarmony now going to go down. The Chain Bomb doing a good amount of work, but the Kael'thas has not done his due diligence here. He's not going to be able to win the entire game for them. And there's the GG as two members go down, and it looks like SK Gaming is going to take game number one. Great job by SK grabbing the first curse, getting ahead in experience, and never letting up from that point. That was just the tale of the game. They knew that they had that top lane push. They knew that would be the point of contention later and were able to make sure it stayed pushed that way so that they could get the Grave Golem and win from there. And that was a really, really good set of decision-making coming out there from SK. They